Good morning everyone, how you doing? Today we're talking about protein, specifically more tips to get in more protein because this is something that a lot of people struggle with and if you're trying to get more toned, which we're gonna talk about in a second, which is what a lot of people are going for, getting in adequate protein is super important. So let's break down those two things really quick before I get into the tips. Number one, what toning actually is, and number two, what adequate protein actually is. So toning is not something that you can actually do. Like there's not something special about it. Your body can either gain fat or lose fat, and it can either build muscle or lose muscle. Looking more toned is a combination of losing fat and building muscle. And for some people it's just one or the other. So if you're skinny fat, you basically just need to build muscle to see more muscle tone. If you have plenty of muscle but have excess body fat, then you might just need to lose fat in order to look more toned. The only reason a lot of people get tripped up with trying to look more toned is that they don't realize how important building muscle is in that. If you're trying to get toned by just losing body fat and you don't have a lot of muscle, you basically end up looking skinny fat, which is fine if that's how you want to look. But like, if you just keep losing fat, you aren't going to magically reveal muscle definition underneath if you don't have a significant amount of muscle built up. So basically to get toned, lose fat, build muscle. To do that, you need adequate protein intake. What is adequate protein intake? According to most of the research, you want to be eating between 0.7 and 1 grams per pound of lean body mass not total body weight. This is where the research shows that the muscle building and fat burning benefits of protein start to taper off after about one gram per pound of lean body mass. Some people are gonna be like genetically like super responders to protein, may benefit from a little bit more. Or there is some research to suggest that if you are very experienced when it comes to lifting heavy, like you've been doing it for years with like really good, like well-programmed training, you may benefit from a little bit more. Most people want to stick to about 0.7 to one gram per pound of lean body mass. And your lean body mass is just your total weight minus your body fat. So if you know your approximate body fat percentage, you can figure out your lean body mass because it's everything other than that. So a lot of people think that they need to be eating more protein than they actually do because they think they have to be eating their body weight in protein. So hopefully right off the bat that helps some of you realize you don't maybe need to eat as much protein as you're trying to, but it is still difficult sometimes to get in 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of lean body mass. So today I'm going to take you through my full day of eating, focusing on eating protein. I am personally aiming for 125 grams of protein per day in approximately like a 2000 calorie diet. So obviously the more calories you can eat, the easier it is to get protein in. If you're trying to eat like 120 grams of protein in 1200 calories might want to look into reverse dieting so hopefully that gives us like a good starting point for this video i'm gonna go make some breakfast and give you some of my top tips when it comes to eating more protein yay all right here's the breakfast plan i'm gonna be making some oatmeal and some scrambled eggs with a little bit of spinach so the oatmeal i have half a cup of my mom homemade some cashew milk so i have half a cup of cashew milk with half a cup of water I'm gonna heat that up. I think I'll wait to cook the eggs until the oats are almost done so that they don't like get cold. I'm adding like a little bit more than half a cup of oats. So one of my big tips, like probably the biggest tip, well, they're all big tips. I like this tip, it's a good tip. If you are struggling to get enough protein in, do not waste a meal by having a meal that doesn't include a protein source. I'm gonna throw a little cinnamon in here because that sounds like a good idea. A lot of people, seem to forget that breakfast can include protein. A lot of people get stuck in the trap of thinking that they have to have breakfast food for breakfast, like cereal or oatmeal or pancakes or waffles or whatever other breakfasty things come to mind when you think breakfast. And like, yeah, it's nice to have breakfasty foods for breakfast. But you can totally have chicken for breakfast. And if you need to make a breakfasty, you have like chicken sausage for breakfast. As soon as you let go of the idea that you have to have like specific foods at specific times of the day, it becomes a lot easier to eat the things that actually do help you get closer to your goals. And that's precisely why I am adding the eggs and the protein powder to this meal is to make sure that I'm getting some actual protein with my breakfast. I could just make oatmeal, but then I know I'd have to try to eat 125 grams of protein in like maybe two more meals and a snack, like max is what I would usually eat. That's a lot of protein to divide into two meals and a snack. So I got a smidge of onion for the eggs, a handful of chopped spinach. And speaking of protein powder, you guys know I don't like to rely on protein powder to get my protein in. Like most days I do not have protein powder. It's usually just if I'm having oatmeal or if I decide to make a smoothie or something like that for breakfast that wouldn't naturally have a good amount of protein in it. About maybe 80%, 75% of the time I will have like 
chicken for breakfast or like one egg with a ton of egg whites or something like that. But my next tip is having a good quality protein powder on hand for those days where you're just struggling to hit your protein. Maybe you're traveling and so it's harder to plan out your meals. Maybe you're gonna go out to dinner and you know that it's gonna be harder to get in your protein so you want to make sure you have like a decent amount before you go out to eat. Like I always always recommend getting your protein from whole and processed food sources first but protein powder is in my opinion like a must-have if you're in a pinch or just you know if you are having a meal where it's inherently like lower protein my personal absolute favorite protein is the four sigmatic protein i have been using this exclusively basically since they came out with it. I don't remember the last time I bought a different protein powder. I'm gonna throw in like half a scoop because honestly there's not that many oats in there and I don't want it to be like half protein powder, half oats, you know? The main reason that I love this one so much is that it is the cleanest plant-based protein powder I have ever seen in my life. Pretty sure it's like the cleanest one in existence that like actually tastes good. You can buy like pure 100% pea protein but that tastes nasty. This one actually tastes good. It has no gums, no fillers, no lecithins, no artificial flavors, no natural flavors. As a side note, people often ask why I try to avoid gums and lecithins and fillers like that and it's because oftentimes unless, like, if the company specifies where it's coming from, then you know where it's coming from. But a lot of the times gums and fillers and things can be derived from gluten containing ingredients or just other inflammatory ingredients and like I have celiac disease, I like gluten is bad news bears for me. So if a company is not specify that it's gluten free and there's gums and fillers in there, then like I have to question that. And for anyone else with any food sensitivities, like if you don't know where the ingredients are coming from, you should be careful. I also love the Four Sigmatic Protein Powder because it has, I think, five different sources of plant-based protein. Yeah, pea, hemp, chia, pumpkin, and coconut. Most plant-based proteins are not complete proteins, so it's really important to get in multiple different sources of protein to get the full amino acid profile that's actually like the most beneficial for muscle building and muscle repair and all that good stuff. And then last thing about the protein powder is it's also full of adaptogens, which just makes my nerdy little adaptogenic loving heart very happy. For those of you who don't know, adaptogens are natural substances like mushrooms, various roots and things, and they help buffer the body against different stressors. So like biological, chemical, environmental, internal, etc. So they basically just like strengthen the body's ability to cope with stress. So I love the fact that it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different adaptogens in there. The only flavoring in the chocolate flavor is cacao powder. Not like chocolate flavor, not like chocolate processed with alkali or whatever the heck. And then it's just sweetened with palm sugar and monk fruit, which are both like very natural, wholesome sweeteners in my opinion. That's literally it. There's no extra stuff in here. It makes me so happy. So if you're looking to get some more protein, try a new protein, clean up your protein game, highly recommend the Four Sigmatic Protein. They have a chocolate, a peanut butter, I think a vanilla, and a plain. I will leave a link to it down in the description box below. And as always, you can use my code FITNERDY to get yourself 15% off of any Four Sigmatic product. All right, so meal number one, a little bit of oatmeal with some protein, threw some cinnamon on there. I've got some eggs with some spinach, and I think I'm gonna throw on some micro broccoli. Found it in my mom's fridge. Microgreens are like jam-packed with nutrients, so I just wanna throw a couple on there to get some more nutrients, because the nutrients are good. This oatmeal, very good. Quick note about protein powder. I was thinking as I was devouring the last of my oatmeal. Some people think that it makes you gain weight. Some people think that it makes you lose weight. Protein powder is basically the same. It's just calories. It's like eating chicken. Like it doesn't have anything particularly special that sets it apart from eating any other food that would confer the same amount of protein. When it comes to weight loss and muscle building, you can think of it like eating chicken. Kind of. The mother and I are about to do some yoga. Mama Nerdy's here. Y'all love Mama Nerdy so much. Say hi to her in the comment section. <laughs> hi back. <laughs> Today's a rest day for me. I'm not lifting. I am still eating the same amount of protein that I eat every day. But yeah, we're just gonna do a quick little stretchy yoga flow. I did like a heavy leg day yesterday and I feel kind of stiff. So like, I feel like I really need this and it's really gonna help.
yoga complete. We're off for some post yoga lunch with the brother. Someone's excited for some food. We're trying out a new little place. I was being we'll see yoga. how it is. You were what? Being post yoga. Post yoga namaste oh. vibes. Yep. <laughs> Another one of my big tips for protein intake is to base your meals around protein. So when you're deciding on a meal, ask yourself what is my protein source going to be before you decide the rest of it. So I'm gonna be looking at the menu for basically chicken and then just kind of deciding what I want based on what has chicken available. Hello, oh my God, we're matching. Amazing. Uh, I was gonna call you to see if you're gonna wear it or not. How are you now? I'm good, how are yeah, you? Good. We're twins! This is so cute. So like, for example, we got tacos. We got chicken tacos. That's a good source of protein. We also have a chicken bowl. Good source of protein in there. Also got some fish and whatever. This, less source of protein because there's no actual direct source of protein in there. So that's kind of how I filter through menus and stuff like that. I'll look for the protein first and then pick based on what's gonna give me as much protein as I need. So I ended up getting the tacos and the reason I'm mentioning chicken specifically like over and over is just because my next tip is to focus more on lean meats, especially if you struggle to keep your fats low, if you're like actively tracking all of your macros. This is simply because chicken and leaner meats are just more pure protein with a lot less fat in them. Whereas if you're having like steak, other red meat, you're gonna get a lot more fat in it. There's nothing unhealthy about steak or less lean meats or anything like that. It's just macro wise, if you're trying to up your protein intake, it's easier when what you're eating is more pure protein. Super excited about these. Get some black beans with it, little extra protein. That's great. And then this is completely irrelevant to the protein, but I'm doing it what I eat in a day. So I got a cortado and asked to add a little bit of the Mexican mocha mix just to make it a little bit chocolatey because you all know how I feel about chocolate. These look so good. Yes, yes. My mom got breakfast nachos. She's splitting the protein pancakes with my brother. This is beautiful. I am excited. Those are so good. Oh, the pancakes are really good. Oh my God. So my brother pointed out an ice cream place right next door. So we're gonna go venture over there. See if we can uh, find some ice cream. Looks promising. Reese's oh Snickers my God, it's a Reese's in a popsicle. Oh That's incredible. So I'm splitting this chocolate and vanilla with the mother. I'm just gonna have like a couple few bites. Later. My next tip is to make your snacks count. I just made myself a delicious little snack of some non-fat Greek yogurt, a little bit of maca, just for like hormone balancing properties. Also, I am quite sleepy today. So I thought it'd give me like a little bit of a boost. Then I threw in some raspberries and some chocolate granola. But the main thing that I wanna highlight in here is the Greek yogurt because it is super high in protein. I think this gives me, let me see. I wanna say one serving is like 18 grams of protein or something crazy. I don't have nearly a whole serving here, but this is almost 10 grams of protein just from the yogurt. And I think similarly to how people like waste breakfast by not having protein with it. Obviously like breakfast is not a waste if you're not eating protein, just like if you're struggling to get in protein, you're wasting an opportunity to eat protein if you're not eating protein with breakfast. Same goes for snacks. If you're having snacks, like pick a snack that has some amount of protein in it. Like avocado toast is fantastic. You guys know I love my healthy fats, but like, again, if you're struggling to get in protein, at least like put some turkey on top of it, put a hard boiled egg on top of it, put some shredded chicken on top of it. Like make sure every time you sit down to eat, you're thinking, where can my protein come from? And then add other things to that to make it be like whatever you want it to be. So I was craving some granola and I was like, I'm not just gonna have like a handful of granola. What protein can I have with the granola? And I was like, yogurt, duh. Just let your snacks like help you get to your goals as opposed to hinder your goals. I think a lot of people when they're tracking macros, they'll have like a random snack and not really think of it as part of their macros. For me personally, I like to use my snacks to fill in the gaps for my macros. So if I know that I'm gonna be low on protein for the day, I'll make sure that my snack is high in protein. Or if I know I'm gonna be low on carbs or fats because I know what I'm gonna have for dinner and I know I'm gonna be low on those, I'll focus on those things instead. Like snacks are so, so helpful for getting in those little extra bits of whatever it is that you need. All right, it's dinner time and for dinner I have a giant nutrition bowl. I would say salad, but I feel like it is more than a salad, you know? Started with some kale, added some black rice, some roasted sweet potatoes, roasted acorn squash, threw on some roasted Brussels sprouts, some chicken, avocado, and then 
One of my next tips is the last ingredient, which was the protein sprinkles. I mean, I guess it's not the last ingredient because then I added a delicious fig balsamic vinaigrette on top, but the last like ingredient ingredient was protein sprinkles. This is one of my favorite recommendations to up your protein intake in little ways that kind of add up throughout the day, and that is add protein sprinkles to things. So for me, this was some biltong that I got on my last Thrive Market order in that video where I talked about like macro-friendly snacks. I just took a little bit of that, chopped it up, and it was like this much, and it was like five grams of protein, which to be fair, is not a ton of protein, but if every time you're sitting down to eat, you're sprinkling like five grams of protein onto it, that adds up. And it doesn't have to be chopped up jerky or pill dog or anything like that. Something that I like to do is also have like shredded chicken that I can just throw onto things. Nuts and seeds are also amazing to throw on top of things for some extra protein and also some extra texture. If you have some hard boiled eggs, you can chop up like the egg whites and sprinkle that on stuff. Beans are amazing. The idea is just to sprinkle foods into your meals throughout the day that have a higher amount of protein to just get you closer to your goal intake. And this makes it so that you don't have to eat like eight ounces of chicken breast three times a day. This spreads it out more in a variety of ways so it doesn't feel like you're just constantly trying to cram protein down your throat. Because here's the thing, with all the protein I've had today, I only needed two ounces of chicken in this. That's not a lot of chicken. I had about four ounces of chicken in my tacos, two ounces of chicken here. That's the only like meat that I have actively consumed today other than my little protein sprinkles on top. But you know, when you're trying to eat more protein, it often feels like you're just constantly like cramming chicken breast down your throat and I've gotten away with not having very much chicken today. But speaking of chicken, my other tip has to do with the chicken in here and that is to keep prepped protein on hand like at all times in case you do need to throw in like an extra two ounces of chicken into your dinner at the end of the day. Clearly I am at my parents house right now, not at my house and so as soon as I got here I prepped some chicken just to keep in the fridge so that you know if my mom made dinner and I was a little bit short on my protein I could just throw some chicken into whatever she was cooking. Like it makes it so much easier to hit your protein goals when you have protein ready and on hand especially like again I keep saying chicken because it's just basically almost 100% protein. So if you're short on protein, it's not gonna make you go over your carbs or your fat. And not only can you throw it in at the end of the day, but it makes it really easy to like have breakfast with a side of chicken, have lunch with a side of chicken, have dinner with a side of chicken. If you're just throwing in sides of chicken, it becomes really easy to hit your protein goals. So those are my two main takeaways from dinner. I'm gonna go eat this dinner now before it gets cold and sad. And when I have dessert, I'll show you what I'm having. So for dessert, I am making just a little bit of tea. This is the Gaia liver cleanse tea. I'm not having it to cleanse my liver. I'm just having it because I like it and it has some ingredients in there that are good for sleep, like some skull cap and peppermint and I think that's kind of it. Also, Shisandra, amazing adaptogen, love that. Got some dandelion in there, love that for liver support. Caffeine free, good. I, I just got worried that it had caffeine in it, but we're good. So I'm gonna make some of this tea, just like a little pot full, and then I'm gonna have half of this chocolate bar. It's almond sea salt dark chocolate from endangered species. It's what my mother has, so it is what I shall be eating. I know, very, very original, Marissa. You're having another half a chocolate bar for dessert? Yeah, it's what I like to do. Don't judge me. I think that's everything that I'm gonna eat for the day. And that's also all of my tips to get in more protein. So I think that means this is the end of the video. If you guys have any more tips to up your protein intake, please leave them down in the comments below so we can all help each other out getting our protein in. Also comment down below and let me know how much protein you aim to get in per day. Whether or not you're tracking, even if you're not tracking, like let me know how much you're aware of your protein intake and how you kind of make sure you are still eating adequate protein without tracking. I'm curious. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you wanna see more videos from me all about health and fitness, you can check them out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video and I will see you very soon. Bye.